God damn, there's some bad games this year. And these are a list of the top 10 worst games of 2013. To preface the list here a little bit, disclaimer, these are games that I have personally played this year. There were a ton of crappy games this year, some of which I didn't get a chance to play. Like Day One Gary's Incident, you can check out TB's video. This game is a fucking disaster. God, it is just horrendously bad. This monkey is running backwards and forwards. This tribesman right here. Hi. Let me guess, if I stand up, he's gonna see me immediately. Of course. Or a snippet from Pro Jared's worst list. Day one, Gary's incident is really, really bad. Day one, Gary's incident is really, really bad. Day one, Gary's incident is really, really bad. And I want to kill myself. Okay, so I always heard that this game was bad. But I didn't know that it was this bad. Yeah, that game is bad. Go check out their videos. But for this list, this is my own personal one. And I've got to also mention that this first game is going to piss off a lot of people that it's on the worst games list. But I think a lot of you understand why it is. It may not be the worst game of all time. It may actually function in almost all aspects. But the very idea that we're going to have to put up with mediocrity for the next 10 years or 8 years like the previous generation's life cycle is horrifying. Some of you may already know what it is. Let's get this thing started. Number 10. The same shit every year. Every year it's the same shit and it is no different this time that's the damn problem no one gets away with this stuff like Madden does in the gaming industry Sports. It's in the game. Always hard to guess what the injury is, but and don't like to speculate, but I think it's pretty apparent. It's an upper body injury. We'll let you know when we find out. Because you know why? We're cowards. So, next gen consoles. Oh yeah, finally! We're gonna get this leaping graphics, engine, textures, presentation, sidelines from our previous gen. F no, what are you stupid? That would actually cost money and take time. EA has to crank these things out about every year because fuck you, give us money. Instead, we get a slightly improved model, a slightly improved texture, slightly improved stadium crowds, slightly improved lighting, and slightly improved sidelines. Slightly. When you run out of bound, players will catch you. They're going to corral you and celebrate with you and send you back out onto the field. The cameramen are going to get out of your way, but they're also going to lock their camera on you. Everything is alive. Everyone is interacting with the play. It makes you feel more involved, more immersed in the game. I understand this play was the biggest play of the game. And nobody's looking inspired. Nobody's looking like they're interactive. I mean, it looks look totally bland. Everything is alive. To me, it looks nothing like you know, no different from the PlayStation and PS3 version. Also, if you look at the coach right here, I mean, he's not even paying attention to his players. Everyone is interacting with the play. I mean, you can look and tell, look, nobody's moving. Everything is alive. Living worlds, people. That's all I got. Peace. I mean, even 2K8, all pro, had dynamic sidelines. So here's what happens on the sideline after he intercepts the ball from the defense. 
This is how they react from the defense. They're pissed off. They're angry. Receiver catches the ball. Boom. He runs into the official, the line official, and his teammate helps him. As you can see right there. Look at the coach. He's like, hold up. Slow down. They're interacting with one another. This is not any, there are any cut scenes or anything. They're actually interacting with one another. At least it wasn't bad as the transition from the Xbox to the Xbox 360 with Madden 06, where they gutted the game and put out a featureless piece of shit, which helped lead to creating the Angry Joe show. And now this, and we get this shit? Look at this. That running attack again here on first down, and that picks up three. You gotta keep your offensive line. Scans the field, and they sack the quarterback. Ah, oh, nothing better than the defense to sack the quarterback in this punt for a gain of about five. And right up the middle, tackled down at the 28-yard line. Seriously? This is the best we can come up with. First down by the offense inside the red zone. Can the defense show them something different here and keep them from scoring? A Let's go down to the field for the latest, and here's Danielle Bellini. Thanks, guys. The coaching staff talked this week about being relaxed. You know what? I'll even show you some realistic shit that you will never see in any Madden game to date and probably never will. Check it out. And it's crazy to you see the safety watching quarterback right here. Steps, gets hurt, grabs his leg, starts limping, and then decides, hey, I'm going to man up, try and finish the play. Can't. Takes another step, starts falling. Momentum's still going. Hits the ground, slides, and then grabs his leg in pain. Like that to me is just crazy. All my years playing a football game, I've never seen an injury play out like this. Does this shit happen to Madden? Fuck no! I stopped buying Madden altogether, hoping they'd clean house and do a complete rebuild for the next gen jump. And after buying this incremental garbage now on the new fucking Xbox One, I'm fucking done. If they won't do it for this, I doubt they'll do it ever. Call me when they take a break from Madden for two years and develop an amazing game without crying about how short of a development cycle they get. Put some effort into these games, man. Act like you care. And is the exclusive NFL license ever gonna expire? Fuck no, because both of those companies are greedy as hell. I'm tired of it. Yeah, they're moving, but you know what? They still look pretty terrible. And that's disconcerting. I really hoped the immersion factor of these sidelines would be a little bit better this year. Everything is alive. Everything is alive. Everything is alive. And while the players are no longer the animated GIFs, look at the same exact hand motions and movements they've been doing for years and years and years. The players move back, but nothing like the interaction we saw with all pro football where they ran away or caught each other, at least in this instance. The most we saw was the you know first down marker guy moving back a little bit. Number nine. F2, Joe. You done fucked it up! Rome Total War 2. I made a 45 minute long video about this disaster of a release, and while it wasn't as bad as the state they put up, uh, some other games, including Empire Total War in. This time, I was older, I was wiser, and I was frankly fed the fuck up. It's no small secret that I love the Total War games. No one does it like Creative Assembly, and they do it on this massive scale. But because of this pedigree, because of the loyal fan base that they've earned over these years, they have a responsibility even more so, to not put out games in this state at release. background it was 
so bad and the company knew it, they braced themselves for the reaction and even wrote posts on Facebook saying that they'd be patching the game for the indefinite future as long as it would take to get it in the condition that it should have been. I, I don't know, how many patches in are we? Eight or nine patches in? I don't know. It's honorable sentiments, but ultimately a shameful display. Shameful display! Shameful display! Shameful display! Shameful display! The reason the game isn't higher on the list because of the fact that in its current state it, it is improved. But we still have to deal with the insane turn pacing, killing all sense of development with our generals, the lack of good diplomacy here, zero family tree stuff, and a lazy senate political mechanic in Rome. This was most certainly not the best that Creative Assembly could do. That much is for sure. Whatever they work on next, be it Warhammer Fantasy or another Total War historical period, I hope that they can prove that. Because unlike a lot of other companies on this list, there is hope for Creative Assembly. Come on, guys! Enough! Number 8. <laughs> Giants, fuck! Oh, shit! <laughs> I'm a combination of Spock and Kirk. I'm Spurk. Fear me, I am Spurk! <laughs> For as much flack as the new Star Trek film franchise gets, I for one love it. Not as a replacement, but in addition. So I was happy to see a game for it. And I was at first sort of encouraged by what I was seeing in, in hands-off demos at conventions. Sure, it was a third-person shooter and that should have been a bad sign, but I thought maybe they were going for an away team feel. And, and honestly, I was looking for some innovation in the Star Trek area. Just something to inject some life into the franchise in these game titles we've been getting lately. But little did I know, we'd be pretty much getting a copy and paste game here. Oh yeah, the banter back and forth between Spock and Kirk is nice here. And that's pretty much where most of the Star Trek stuff ended, okay? And while its gameplay wasn't the worst I've ever played this year, none of it feels Star Trek. Void of any diplomacy, multiple solutions to complex problems were nixed and removed or never even intended in the first place. Paper thin fan service for tricorder gameplay and technology. Yeah, that's what we got. Check. Over here! You have to put out this fire. You may be able to manually trigger the fire suppression. Thank you. If you weren't here, well, I don't know what. God awful poorly programmed stealth missions. Yup, check. Buggy ass release. Check and check. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> The worst part is they took the legendary Enterprise and turned the entire fucking thing into one big turret for a piece of shit turret section. What the fuck? And while it's visually impressive, it's got no substance, it's an on-rail shooter, worse, I kept getting killed because I didn't realize that for some reason, Starfleet thought it would be a good idea to play red light, green light with their shields and raise them lower the shields raise them lower them raise them lower them raise them lower them raise lower 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 I am doing this as hard as I can digital extremes as hard as I can Number seven. 
Fire volley! Fire volley! Fire volley! Fire volley! This is so awkward and just... What the fuck am I even doing wrong? right now? Do you see? The, the fucking thing isn't even hitting anybody when you fire that. Look, Rise looks beautiful. Like, amazing. There's tons of detail in this and that, but all that flareness for nothing. It's boring. I, I don't want... I, I, I gotta say it's boring. <laughs> because, like, I love the Roman stuff, and I love Roman yeah. times, but I think that... Look for the opportunity. Try again. Look for the it's just kind of tedious, to be honest. Not uh, like that. It's, it's honestly the lack of control, and... and just... Perfect. Overall sense of, like, it's just feels kind of sloppy. Yeah. So boring, monotonous, rinse and repeat formulaic combat. And the same with Knack on PS4. These games were built more as tech demos for what the systems could do. Rise with the graphics and Knack with, um, Knack physics or some shit. I don't know. I got Knacked up the ass is what I got. I'm just trying That's to- It's the worst co-op <laughs> game ever. I hate it. <laughs> I'm just trying to do the best I can for us. Neither of these games has any reason to exist, and they weakened their console launch lineups. There's no penalty for me dying. It's as if co-op essentially was tacked on at the end of the game. God damn it. There's really, there's no Explosion. penalty at all for me dying. It's not really a co-op game, it's just... One well, I mean, it is co-op, but... Everybody playing with your little brother, so here, you take it. Yeah, you can play with me. <laughs> and you can just ignore him the whole game, because he has no effect. He doesn't have to do anything. And they took some excitement out of having to spend hundreds of dollars on a new console and accessories. I guarantee you a bit of us were sitting there with some buyer's remorse. It likely creeped in as, we're, as you play through these boar fests. You're like, fuck, less of these and more of good games. We got back tonight, and uh, it was a knacking good time, wasn't it? <laughs> Except for it wasn't. All right, guys, see you all on the next stream. Number six. This game sucks. The camera sucks, the combat sucks, it's repetitive, the checkpoint system is terrible. It's not enjoyable. You're forcing yourself through the game yeah. because it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I get you. I understand. We love the turtles. We've been <laughs> the best part about this game is that if you don't play it and you sit around, you can make the turtles dance. Yeah! Go Ninja! Go Ninja! Go! Go Ninja! Go Ninja! Go Ninja! Like, it's completely random what happens, and this is more fun than the actual game. <laughs> That's it. Uh, that's it. A five second animation was more fun and captured more of the turtle's life than this entire game. It's just uninspired. It is repetitive. The combat sucks. It's marred by major camera issues. The fucking camera sucks. It sucks pee pee. <laughs> <laughs> camera's dookie, all right? <laughs> it's ruining everything. The game was painful to play twofold, because it sucked balls and because it was doing a disservice to its license. I just couldn't even bear to finish this thing, and you shouldn't bother either. Oh sure, only the hardcore fans out there squeezing the blood from this stone could pretty much appreciate this schlock. For everybody else, stay far away. Look, this is... No, fuck this. Fuck. I'm, beating up, I'm, I'm beating up a guy, you just don't see him. <laughs> you might as well be beating up a guy. Hey, don't be looking at my screen! <laughs> don't look at my screen! Hey. <laughs> Damn it! Number five. If you don't have one of these, and you don't get one for Christmas, an iPad, then you've been saved from one of the worst games of the year and one that represents all that is ugly and wrong in a growing nasty ass trend for mobile gaming. Greed over gameplay. Greed over gameplay, now that is great advice, Angry Joe. <laughs> Take it.
take your iPad and iPhone to the final frontier. With the new Star Trek Turtles game. Game, game, game. This game is gross. It's just fucking gross. I get that cow clickers are designed to separate a fool from his money in small increments. Before you know it, you paid more than $60 on dilithium crystals for a mobile click fest. It looks... See, there's one. Oh, no! No, the fucking space fire fucking took my great though! Fuck you! Yeah! Some games do it better than others. You know, so that the journey there isn't quite as painful. But Trexel's journey is basically a huge paywall in Sector 2, ironically right after it asks you to vote on how fun the first sector was with a 5 star rating. BAM! Brick wall next! The timers get blown out the ass, and if you get past them by waiting or paying dilithium crystals, say, one or two dollars every fucking time, you're rewarded with yet another timer. The timers have fucking timers to get to the timers. I'm not joking. Pixel costumes for your crew that run you $10 each. Kirk costs. Ten dollars! Barely looks like Kirk! Spock costs ten dollars! In fact, if you want the entire uh, original crew from the Enterprise, from the original Star Trek show, it's gonna set you back 200 di- 250 dilithium crystals, which is about 36 dollars! What the fuck? The Star Trek license took a beating this year, and this game highlights a growing trend in mobile gaming that's starting to dominate its landscape. And I promise you, if it is not checked, it will start to threaten our core games as well. That's why I needed to bring it to your attention. That, and I got really pissed that I got suckered in on nostalgia, and just fucking exploited with this freemium gameplay Garbage when I even paid up front for the game instead of unlocking the next map like in other games You actually have to pay resources to unlock the next map. So here's another paywall. This requires level 20 as well Oh, well if you want to reveal it you can reveal it for 75 dilithium crystals Well, let's see how much is 75 dilithium crystals you can get 60 for five uh, for ten bucks so 60 plus the 25, you're gonna reveal that area simply for $15. You can reveal the next fucking area. Well, hell, here's sector four, here's sector five, here's sector six. There are tons of better mobile games out there for around the same cost that offer you way more fun and way more valuable. Dragon Age Heroes, Tiny Thief, Niroshima Hex, and so many more. Go check that out if you want something to play when you're sitting on the fucking commode. I hope that I can tell you more about those rather than this garbage. Take your iPad and iPhone to the final frontier. <laughs>Dead survival instinct. The opposite of how to treat a license with respect. Where the adventure Walking Dead paid homage to its roots while also offering a new story with its, within its own right, survival instinct chose the lazy ass route. Hey, let's make a crappy first person shooter with terrible animations. Cram in this weird driving mechanic where you don't get to drive and throw in some cool salvage missions that could have been awesome. But no, let's half-ass everything. Oh my god, what is that, a broken piece of floating fence? What the f I'm right here, you Y'all fucking zombies pay attention to me. I will slap, I will slap you. I will slap you. I will slap you. What are you doing over there, bitch? Going to town on that fence? Kill this motherfucker, fuck you. Look at what are you breaking? <laughs> 
What are you, hardcore yeah. dancing? Stupid, <laughs> slam your head against the wall. How fucking difficult is it to program AI for fucking zombies? Are you serious? What the hell is the purpose of this game? Maybe it was supposed to be this interesting prequel backstory exploring Daryl and Merle, but it fucks that up. Hey everybody, my name is Michael Rooker. I play Merle in The Walking Dead. Adapt and overcome, little D. In the game, it's it's uh, pre Atlanta it's with me and my uh, little brother, Norman Reedus. And he plays Daryl. And it's spelled D E R L E. It's not Daryl, it's Daryl. Please get that right. It boils down to basically a story about how Daryl got his crossbow. It's mentioned like in a single fucking sentence. It's like in a bar on the ground or something. I don't know. Or hey, look at this thing. Don't you like this thing? Meh. Stupid. Absolutely stupid and pointless. Maybe it was sincere in its approach, but its execution screams cash in. Sonny boy, I can stand here doing nothing a hell of a lot longer than you. I guarantee you that. Sonny boy, I can stand here doing nothing a hell of a lot longer than you. I guarantee you that. Number three. Baby, my heart's on fire. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me. Then you'll be left alone, oh baby. Telephone and tell me I'm your own. You fucked it up. Speaking of cashing in, what a fucking fiasco this next thing was. This one hits me right here. <laughs> Over, man! No! <laughs> As if releasing in a completely poor state wasn't enough. On top of that, this game that we were promised was gonna be fucking excellent was not there! Oh. I thought he was down. He started going in the animation where he stumbled. What the nope. fuck, O'Neal? Get the fuck out of the way! God damn it, O'Neal. You're just a Get the fuck out of the way, O'Neal. You just killed him. You piece of shit. And now he leaves. Fuck <laughs> you, O'Neal. You're always in the way and you don't do shit. I felt con. I felt taken advantage of. I felt really fucking angry. It was one slap in the face to alien fans, one right after the other. I think that Aliens fans, people who really love this franchise, are going to be really happy with the way in which we brought this forward. It's got a very strong story, it's got great action, it's got an interesting enemy. Fans should be expecting to be scared, they should be expecting to be excited. It's different, we're, we're approaching the first person shooter differently, we're, we're even approaching how we have a main character talk within first person in a totally new way that I don't think anyone's done before. Oh you want aliens in the game? Well fuck you! Fight generic Waylon Yutani soldier number 340 instead. Looking for some horror elements mixed with first person shooters? Fuck you, take a shitty Call of Duty clone. Sir. We have hostiles firing on us. This is Waylon 65, returning fire. Remember your rules are against the closest humans down there. They're fucking shooting at us, sir. Captain, we are under attack by human forces in the control room. Corporal Hicks is alive and rather pointless and useless in this story. Fuck right off! Bullshit! Wait, wait, wait. Are you looking to have a memorable, awesome showdown with the motherfucking queen? Well, get fucked. This is what you get. <laughs> You press a button, you throw her out the airlock. This sounds fucking stupid. Who created this last climactic level? Screw us, right? Wanting to, I don't know, have an awesome battle of the queen. And that's pretty much what Gearbox said to everyone. Screw all you guys. 
Hell, I still don't know how much of the game w was outsourced or if any of its funding was used for Borderlands 2 or any of the other crazy ass conspiracy theories on what actually fucking happened behind the scenes with this thing. can climb on the ceilings and the walls. It's all driven by sophisticated artificial intelligence. Bullshit! And I guess we'll never know. Should I blame Gearbox or did this other company develop it and make this garbage? Well, ultimately it's Gearbox's fault. That's true, it's Gearbox's fault ultimately. And I never want them to touch the alien's license again. Look, I like Gearbox. Trust me, they were totally cool, true gamers. They even gave me shout outs when I was first starting out when I barely had no subscribers. It's tough for me to say that kind of stuff about a company that, you know, liked my stuff early, but there's just some things that you have to call like you see them. And this thing was a disaster. And that honestly deserved a lot of the backlash that it got. Especially with all these weird underhanded practices and showing shit that's not really shit and having other companies make it for you. I, I don't understand. Why did you disrespect the license like this? So then why isn't this higher on the list? Well, because that's how big of a fan of this license I actually am. There are some good elements here and there. The game has gotten better with patches, no doubt. And it certainly wasn't the worst game I ever played in my life when it came out. No, I actually rather enjoyed my time with some of the multiplayer aspects. You know, customizing and leveling up your, your Marines and aliens. Expected a whole lot more from Gearbox. But I guess I shouldn't have. Now the good news is that the more I learn about Creative Assembly's new alien game called Alien Isolation, the more hope I have that this license can crawl back from the beating that this game gave it in the public eye. Come on you fuckers! You want some? Get some! Get some! Get some! Come on! Come on little! Yeah, you like that? You like that? Die! Die! Get away from me you! Number two. You lose. Round two. Fight. Fight. High combo. High straight combo. If, if Microsoft thought that starting with Fighter Within and its Kinect lineup would get it off on the right foot, it didn't. In fact, it pretty much amounted to rolling their ankle and then breaking their face on the pavement hard on the first fucking step. And I know what you're thinking. Joe, why would you expect a Kinect game to be anything but bad? Oh, seriously, a Kinect game? But that's the problem right there. It is terrible that we now expect Kinect games to suck and that we don't expect anything from them. That in itself is fucking wrong. It shows you how much they've messed this thing up. Even more so, why this fails even harder is, is how Microsoft said that the Kinect is now way more powerful and more accurate and double this and double that and supposedly shouldn't be having these very basic issues. Finally, we have a game where you can fight your friends using your body instead of a game controller. The power of the new Kinect turns the promise of motion fighting into a reality. It's revolutionary! This device, it makes all other devices seem obsolete. I mean, you could actually call this device an anti-device. And yet 
here we are with a title that's just as bad as the previous generation Kinect games. In some cases, it's worse. Push jump kick. forward, jump, not jumping forward. You're about to get what rained out. Fun? You're about to get rained out. Yes, I'm so I know, I know you're worse because Power this track. fucking Kinect Dude, doesn't out. fucking register you this maneuver. We have capitalized on the new Kinect technology. Track simple moves. Reproduce them on screen. Now let's yeah. Look at this! The throw! Throw! Just because this game. Throw! I'm doing the same fucking maneuver that I did in the last fucking track. Fuck this shit. This bothering me. You lose! Fighters within is a shit excuse for a game. The worst possible example of the supposedly new and improved Kinect. There's not even goddamn voice commands! This title does way more damage to the Kinect's 2.0 perception than it does changing people's mind about gesture-based gameplay. Why this was allowed to release as a launch title is either a colossal fuck-up or a testament to the future of Kinect gaming. The menu was designed so poorly, the title barely functions. Okay, so I'm reading back. I'm tired of fighting the menu. Back. Options. No, I didn't say volume. Oh, okay. Yes! How the fuck are we gonna fight? You can't even Yes! <laughs> oh yes. my god. Yes! Stop it. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Stop, Joe! Yes. <laughs> Joe, this menu is really starting to piss me off now. I'm not even on it, so it's not me. It's okay, I'm, 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 I got this. I'm about to get mad. Nice, Joe, nice try. Nice try. Mm -hmm. Other basic gestures, besides punches and kicks, are pretty much ignored with frequency. The game is filled with all sorts of other hilarious bugs! <laughs> Look at this! Look at this kick leg! This is the most awful kick leg in the world! Oh, paper! Come! Oh, 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 oh. And for the love of God, please! Stop making games that require the connect to fucking lean, okay? Connect doesn't understand fucking leaning. Connect doesn't know how to do this, okay? Stop it! Number one. It lost. Why didn't you stick up for me? Jesus, Mike. I've been gone, okay? I don't know what the hell's going on between you and Max. You're different, Jake! Oh my god, this list is gonna kill me. F this game, I bar I barely got through this next game. You rotten son of a bitch! You don't know the half of it. I had to force myself through every step of this piece of shit at five, no, even three hours. It's overstayed its welcome. It's bad. It's worse than bad. It's like a disgusting living mutant ball of garbage, like an aborted Abomination baby from Satan himself just choking the ever-living happiness out of your life! Jesus Get it off me! This is what happens when you let a pubescent, immature teenager write fan fiction and biker sex fantasies while you get a team of poorly skilled developers to attempt an open world game that's way over their head where they have little to no experience on what the f*** they're doing and then where management completely f*** everybody in the ass. That's what this like. You know that scene in Event Horizon? 
That must have been what the fucking office must have looked like. I can't show you it here, and I don't want my video to get flagged. But if you know that scene in Event Horizon, you know what I'm talking about. We're leaving. And on top of all that, after they shit out this demon baby, this this thing that it is, Deep Silver took it. And was, oh, look at the baby. Oh. And they had the gall to release this fucking thing out onto the world. This is like a skinny little old baby cow, ain't it? <laughs> you ever slice an ear off of a baby cow? Scream and scream. I guess to make some of the money back that they insanely poured into this Doom project, if the goal here was to completely waste the time, effort, and money of everyone involved, developer, publisher, and unsuspecting gamer alike, then bravo, bravo, fucking mission accomplished. Jake, what the hell happened? It has some of the worst, most insulting sex scenes I've ever seen in a video game. It made me uncomfortable. He's mine. Don't you forget that. up against each other like you're literally having sex with some chick seven seconds after you save her from being very nearly brutally raped because you know nothing turns on women like being sexually assaulted by disgusting pigs and if you save her well then your only fucking reward is obviously sex get sucking this game couldn't be any more juvenile and stupid if it tried. I don't know what would have happened if you hadn't come along. Is there anything I can do to show my gratitude? I'm sure you could use something more than that. It's offensive, and it makes every fucking gamer look bad. It, it tries to save some sort of huge revelation about its story for the end. Don't you move now, Cherry Pie. Time to put that fucking piece down, cowboy. Why these biker dudes are so bad, and why they murder and kill so much. Well, you want to know why? Because they don't like your dad. That's why. <laughs> so why did you wait 25 years to act on killing his whole family? Oh, fuck you. Try to release that game. Try to. I dare you. The series is launching as three separate titles for iOS console download and as full console and window PC releases. Fuck off with this game, man. I'm done. These were the fucking worst games. Get out of my face. The pleasure's been all mine. <laughs>